Well, hello once again to everyone. Greetings, first of all, to the members of our Pilgrim Church family who are viewing this. And greetings as well to any visitor who has tuned in for this daily or weekly devotional. I'm Danny. I'm here on behalf of all the elders at the Church of Christ in Pilgrim with our weekly opportunity for reflection and discernment for the Word. And this is for Wednesday, September the 6th of 2023. You may have seen recently posted on various social media platforms an advertisement promoting a particular study guide for the entire Bible entitled Bible Blueprints. It is a digital study guide designed to be a quick reference source in which each book of the Bible, both the Old Testament and the New Testament, is presented in a one-page outline. Anyone interested can purchase the rights at HTTPS teachsundayschool.com slash i slash bible blueprints crew and you'll receive access to a link by which the files can be downloaded. The purchaser is then free to print these outlines at your leisure. I decided to order these outlines and add them to my personal resource collection and after looking them over I thought that they just might even make a good format for these video devotions that we've been doing with one possible drawback. If I were to use one book outline per week, that would mean the series would stretch out over a span of 66 weeks, nearly a year and a half. Even covering two books per week would still require over six months. Four outlines per week would account for a more manageable 17 weeks, or just over four months. My only concern with that schedule is the possibility that even though these are condensed outlines, the use of four at one time might border on being too much material being presented for, per week. Well, I guess the only way to find out is to just jump in and try. Now, due to copyright restrictions, I will not be displaying any of the outline pages on camera. I suggest that you either take notes of any material that interests you or you could purchase your own copy from the website I listed earlier. You could print that out and then follow along. So with that being said, here is what we can learn from the one-page study outlines of the first four books of the Old Testament. We begin, of course, with Genesis. It's the first book in order in the Old Testament. It has 50 chapters, and the type is history, and it's, of course, part of the Pentateuch. As an overview, the first book in the Bible, Genesis, records the creation and the flood through early Bible history, from about 4000 B.C. to 1800 B.C. It begins with Adam and Eve, then covers the lives of Noah and Abraham, and three generations of Abraham's many descendants. It tells the stories of patriarchs Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. Wondrous workings of God amaze them, and trials and tribulations reveal their persistence in faith. It was written somewhere around 1430 years BC, possibly during the Exodus. The time period covered is approximately 4004 BC to 1805 BC, or about 2200 years. The author is assumed to be Moses. And you can break down Genesis into five segments. The first segment is from creation to the Tower of Babel. This is Genesis chapter 1 through 11. God creates the world and mankind. Several generations follow Adam and Eve. Men become wicked, and God sends a flood. The only survivors are Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their wives. Men build the Tower of Babel, and God confounds the languages. Second segment, we have the life of Abraham. This covers Genesis chapters 12 through 25. Abraham and Sarah leave their hometown of Haran and travel to the Promised Land. They move to Egypt during years of famine. Lot and Abraham eventually separate, and God promises to make Abraham's descendants a great nation. Segment 3 covers the life of Isaac. This is chapters 25 through 27 of Genesis. Abraham and Sarah pray to have a baby in their old age. Isaac is born as a miracle. He's saved from sacrifice by an angel of the Lord, and he is also promised that his descendants will be a great nation. Rebekah is chosen to be the wife of Isaac. She arrives after the passing of Sarah, and Isaac is comforted through his mother's death. Segment four is the life of Jacob. This covers Genesis chapters 28 through 36. Rebekah bears twins, Esau and Jacob. 
Jacob must deceive his elder twin Esau to take his birthright. He works 14 years to marry Rachel after first being tricked into marrying her sister Leah. He fathers 12 sons, the future tribes of Israel. Jacob's name is changed to Israel after he visits the future promised land. <clears throat> and then the fifth segment of Genesis is the life of Joseph. This covers the remaining chapters from 37 through 50. Israel, or Jacob's 11th son Joseph, is sold by his brothers into slavery and taken to Egypt. There he rises into power through interpreting dreams, including the Pharaohs. With God's help, Joseph prepares Egypt against future famine. He reconciles with his family when they arrive seeking food. Joseph invites them to live with him in Egypt. Joseph promises the Israelites that God will bring them out of Egypt and back to the Promised Land. Second book, Exodus. Of course, it's two in order in the Old Testament. It contains 40 chapters. And again, it is the same type, history, as part of the Pentateuch. Overview of Exodus. It records the return of the nation of Israel to the Promised Land after having spent nearly 400 years in Egypt as slaves. The people had cried out to God, who reminded them that the Israelites are a chosen people, and he would help them return to the Promised Land. This book contains the first laws of Israel, which Moses recorded, as well as many well-known stories and miracles. It was written somewhere around 1400 B.C., and it covers the time period from 1525 B.C. to 1400 B.C., again, the author being Moses. Exodus can be broken down into six segments. The first one is Hebrew history and Moses' background, chapters 1 through 3. After over 400 years of the Israelites living in Egypt, a new pharaoh comes into power and enslaves the Hebrews. Moses is born, sent down the river in a basket by his loving mother, saved by the Pharaoh's daughter from death, and later called by God at the burning bush to deliver the people of Israel out of Egypt. Segment 2 covers Moses' leading of the people to freedom. This is chapters 4 through 14 of Exodus. Moses returns to Egypt and repeatedly asks the Pharaoh to free the Israelites. The Pharaoh refuses, and God sends ten plagues upon Egypt. The Israelites are protected against the plagues, and after the tenth plague, Pharaoh allows them to go. He changes his mind and sends the army to recapture the slaves, but they escape when Moses parts the Red Sea. Moses and his people pass through the sea, falls back, and the Egyptian army perishes. The third segment is wandering through the wilderness, Exodus chapters 15 through 19. The Israelites travel in the desert, constantly watched over by God, who provides them with manna, bread from heaven, quail, and water. They often complain about their hardships. Moses ascends Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments from God. Segment 4, the laws are given to the people, Exodus 20 through 31. Moses teaches the Israelites God's laws, including the Ten Commandments. Following that, Moses records social and moral laws, instructions for festivals, and explicit instructions for designing the tabernacle. Segment 5, the golden calf as an idol and repentance, Exodus chapters 32 through 34. The Israelites make a golden idol in the shape of a calf, and Moses, in his anger, breaks the stone tablets that contain the commandments. The Israelites repent and are forgiven. Moses returns to Mount Sinai, sees God's glory, and receives new stone tablets. And then the final, segment six, constructing the tabernacle. This covers Exodus chapters 35 through 40. The tabernacle is built, including the Ark of the Covenant, and the rules are given that govern its use. The book does not end with the death of Moses. That will be covered in Deuteronomy. Third book in order is Leviticus. It has 27 chapters, and once again, it is a history book from the Pentateuch. The overview of Leviticus. This book derives its name from Levi, the tribe of Israel, designated to serve as priests. It contains instructions for the priests to perform sacrifices and ceremonies in the tabernacle and the duties of the Israelites in offering them. After living in Egypt for so long, many of the Israelites had adopted Egyptian customs and idols, so these Levitical laws were needed to point them back to God's law. It governs the new nation in righteous living with explicit examples of the law of love 
to be pronounced in the New Testament. This book was written around 1445 BC. It covers the time period of 1445 BC to 70 AD because the law would apply until shortly after the death of Christ when the temple was destroyed in 70 AD, the author being Moses. Leviticus can be divided into four segments. First segment, the types of offering to the Lord, Leviticus chapters 1 through 9. The Lord gives laws for worship, including instructions for different types of offerings and how to prepare them. Second segment is the, death, the deaths of Aaron's sons in Leviticus 10. Two of Aaron's sons die following their decision to add to an unauthorized sacrifice. Segment 3, Rules of Hygiene and Morality, Leviticus chapters 11 through 20. The Lord reveals laws concerning cleanliness, including instructions for those who have suffered disease and experienced childbirth. These laws offer protection against the spreading of germs and correlate with modern medical practices. Today, people often return to this section recognizing that these principles promote good health. The fourth segment is Miscellaneous Rules. Leviticus 21 through 27. The Lord gives more instructions regarding priests and establishes festivals, holy days, feasts, crop preparations, and more. The rewards for obedience and consequences of disobedience are also outlined. And then our fourth book in the Old Testament, the book of Numbers. It contains 36 chapters and is once more uh, designated as a history book and part of the Pentateuch. The name of this book comes from the Lord's instruction to count the Israelite males who were able to go to war. It begins where Exodus leaves off. <clears throat> With the journey of Israel through the wilderness and contains events as they wandered for 40 years. The reading can be quite engaging if the context is understood. Proof that the Hebrews were extremely accurate record keepers, both of numbers and of events. This is evidence that they can be trusted to present an Old Testament record that is reliable. Numbers was written somewhere around 1400 BC. It covers the time period of 1450 to 1400 BC and is another book authored by Moses. Numbers can be divided into six segments. The first segment being Israel prepares to leave Mount Sinai. This covers Numbers chapters 1 through 10. The Israelites complete the tabernacle, and Moses completes the Levitical laws. The people prepare to leave Mount Sinai. Moses conducts a census, recording the number of adult males in the tribe, in the tribes rather, excluding the Levites, and the Lord reveals more rules. The second segment, Israel moves to Kadesh, chapters number, Numbers chapters 10 through 12. The Israelites complain often desiring meat instead of the manna provided by God. God sends fire to stifle the complainers as well as well as quail to quench their desire for meat. Moses' siblings, Aaron and Miriam, rebel and Miriam becomes leprous for a week's time. The third segment is about a rebellion in Kadesh. Numbers chapters 13 through 20. Moses sends spies to the promised land of Canaan and they bring back a mixed report destroying faith of the Israelites, so they become afraid to enter the land of Canaan. As a result, God reveals that the Israelites will wander for 40 years in the desert. Moses brings forth water by striking a rock, and more rebellion and laws are recorded. Segment 4, The Journey from Kadesh to Moab. Numbers chapters 20-21. through 21. Aaron dies at Mount Hor shortly after Miriam dies at Kadesh, and Israel wins its first battles. Fiery serpents afflict the people, and those who are bitten become sick, and many die. Moses holds up a bronze snake in the wilderness as a foreshadowing of Christ on the cross, and all who look at the serpent are healed. Segment 5, we find Israel anticipating taking the promised land while still in Moab. This is Numbers chapters 22 through 32. In Moab, King Balak asked the Moabite prophet Balaam to curse the Israelites and the donkey of Balaam speaks words from God. Balaam instead blesses the Israelites and prophesies of Christ. Some Moabites invite Israelites to worship their gods and to participate in fornication. Those that accept are destroyed and a plague kills 24,000 before others repent. The Lord 
reveals yet more laws for Israel. And then the final segment of Numbers is uh, miscellaneous issues. This covers chapters 33 through 36. Moses writes a review of Israel's journey from Egypt to Canaan. Laws of inheritance are revealed and outlined so that some women could actually own property. Well, I hope that you have found today's video study to be interesting and will plan to continue viewing as the series continues to be posted. My goal in presenting this new study of Bible books in outline form is to pique your interest so that you'll spend some of your own personal time, study time, digging deeper into the scriptures. I think you'll find that doing so will help you increase your knowledge of, increase your understanding of, and increase your confidence in the Holy Word. This can only bring positive results in your daily walk with God. So please join us next week as we take the next step in our study and review the Old Testament books of Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, and Ruth. Until then, I encourage you to make it a regular practice to make some time every day. Spend time in prayer to the Father and then take time to study His Word. If you're not currently attending a Bible study or worship services somewhere, I invite you to visit us at the Church of Christ in Pigram. I can promise you a warm welcome, along with the opportunity to get to know and to grow spiritually with a loving body of baptized believers in God, in His Son, and in His Spirit. I pray that God will bless you and your family each day. Remember, I love you all and take care.